Good morning. This is Kathy Crowders Mountain, North Carolina. And I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas and are having a wonderful new year. And it will be your best year ever. And I'm excited to be back filming again. You know, you have to spend time with your family. Family's everything. So that's what I did. And I'm back now ready to film another barn quilt video and i hope you enjoy this um, snowflake that we're going to do it's actually um, actually it's an eight point star and i'm going to create it using winter kind of colors uh, you can create it any way you want to paint it um, all different colors but I'm going to do the blues, grays, white, that kind of thing to make it look more winter time. Silver, we'll throw some silver in there too. But let's get started with um, just drawing the pattern now and then I'll show you my colors. And, you know I use this for you guys I use this tablet um, that I got and I'll I'm going to cut out 18 inches because the board that we're going to use today is 18 inches. I've been doing the 3x3s and the 2x2, two two, but I thought, you know, 18 inches is a good size to put on a, like near your front door or if you've got a small outbuilding uh, or just want to hang it up in your house. And 18 inches is a, a really good size for that. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. Let me get this cut out, and I'll be back. Okay, so here we go. This is not a hard pattern at all. So we have 18 inches here. And I'm going to draw it on the uh, block side. You know, you've got a blank side over here, and a lot of times I draw my pattern on that side, but I'm going to use this side today but these little blocks really won't have a lot to do with our pattern so you know don't get caught up in that all right so for this particular pattern we need four equal blocks and the 18 inches is going to work great because we're going to have a border so we'll do a one inch border around our block and so because these blocks are one inch I don't have to measure a lot for you but you just measure one inch all the way around your board and just make your little tick marks So I'm just drawing this border out for you. And then in a little bit we'll put, I'm trying not to get my head in the way, and I made those marks up there so when I move my paper around I'll remember, you know, I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember to put it back where it's supposed to be, so I always keep you guys in the camera. Alright, so there's our one inch border. So if you subtract one inch from your left and one inch from the right side, you get 16 inches left inside. Well, we need four blocks, so that's four inches a, a piece. So we're just going to make our tick mark. Now, all you got to do is make sure your ruler is at the starting point, not at the end of the ruler. And you're going to make a tick mark every four inches. Now, I've got my blocks, but I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to try to use them. Because you may not have that on your board. <laughs> or you may not have a flip chart like I do. Okay, so they're four inches apart and we made a tick mark, right? So we're going to make a tick mark on this side 
every four inches. Four, eight, twelve. And over here. Four, eight, and twelve. And we're gonna come back up here. That's not hard, is it, so far? And all we're going to do is just, you know, we're drawing a grid. Um, I think you could probably do this with points and measurements other way, but I do a grid because it's just easier. It's easier for me to show you how to do a grid than it is all those other measurements. You might like geometry and algebra and all that and fractions and whatever you need to draw it out. <laughs> so all I'm doing see what's happening. We're just drawing our grid. creating the blocks on our quilt. All right, so we have four across and four up. And that's all we needed. Now we're actually gonna start drawing our pattern. All right, so the pattern actually is, is not that hard. I always tell folks to start on the left bottom and take it one block and one row at a time. No matter how complicated that pattern is, it'll work out if you just take it one block and one row at a time if you're getting started. Now if you've been doing this for a while, you know, you can go across three or four blocks at a time if you want to with your ruler. But let me get a smaller ruler. I get one without paint. <laughs> That's kind of hard to do down here. All right, so we've got our border. So our first block, we, we don't have anything in it right now. And our second block, all we're gonna do is draw a triangle line. I got a gnat in here in the middle of winter time. All right, and then the next block, here, we'll go. so we just drew a V up and then down and then blank. All right, so for let's go back to the second row, the first block. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to draw it from left to right. And this one is from left to right. And this one is from right to left. And so is this one. So you see what I'm doing, one row at a time. All right now I'm all the way up here on the third block. And that is going to be that V shape it's same as that. We went from right to left. We're going to go from right to left again. And you see what I was saying about if, if you've done it a while, you could have went straight across like that with your ruler. But I'm taking you guys one block at a time. All right, so for this block, went down and we're gonna go down again. 
see there's the D again. All right, now we're all the way up here to the top. We almost have our pattern drawn. So we've got, this is a, this one is blank. Just drawing that V shape again and our blocks. See that? There you have it. Almost. Almost. Not quite. All right. Now, this is just an eight point star. And we're going to paint each section. Of, uh, we're going to have two colors in here a light blue and a, a little bit darker blue so it'll be light dark light dark light dark light dark but just to add a little bit of dimension to it we're going to put let me see if i find another color marker we are going to put some a, a shape down here and i'll show you so line this, line your ruler up on that second block, first row, second block over, and just line your ruler up from corner to corner. But we're not drawing all the way up, we're just drawing to the middle of it. Get my pen right in here, there you go. See that? So we're gonna do that over here. We're just going to line it up with those corners. Now, we'll have those two different colors, contrasting colors. And we're going to do the same thing over here, but the easiest way to get that halfway and to make sure you've got it right is to line the corners up together. This will just, um, painting these will just give it a little bit of extra dimension without getting it too busy. Because we don't want it to be so busy you lose the pattern in your, when somebody's looking at it, their eyes are crossed. <laughs> All right, then I have this stencil snowflake, but now this one's way too big. I've got to go find another one. But for the snowflakes that's in here, I'm just going to use a stencil and just probably do silver or something like that. Now I've got my I've got my board, and I'll show you that before I start. I've got the board. I've got the kills on it, and it's drying while I'm doing this. Now, I'm going to send this one to one of my cousins out in Washington State. And they're having a ton of snow out there. So she, <laughs> she may say she has seen enough snow, but I'm going to send it to her anyway. But I'm going to find a smaller stencil to go right here. And then there's some tiny snowflakes in here. We'll see about that. I think I have stencil. Now, you know, you guys that do freehand artwork, you may say, well, I'm just going to draw mine. Well, I'm not that good at that, so we're going to use a stencil. And I'll show you. 
If you've got a Cricut, you can make your own stencil. And I've got one, but I think I have other stencils. I don't have to go through all that making one. Okay. Let me pick the colors out while that kills is drying, and I'll be right back and show them to you. All right, I've got the colors picked out. I've got two shades of blue. I've got Cameo Blue and North Holland Blue. And I think they complement each other. And that is going to be the star itself. And then for the background, I'm going to use the Ultra White. And I'm using that um, Ultra White. It's a brighter white because I'm going to put silver bullet for the snowflakes and I want to make sure that the snowflakes show up but not not too overpowering and then for my border which you know you don't have to do a border if you don't want to you don't have to do one but I'm going to do one and I want it to be just a little bit darker gray I don't want anything harsh and dark so I'm just going to use this gravity gray and that's our colors and I don't have a stencil for a smaller snowflake, so I may use that Cricut over here and make one. But I'll be back. It's, I'm still waiting on that kills to dry on that piece of MDO, but I'll show it to you. Oh, in the meantime, while we're talking about showing you stuff, don't you look what my, what my granddaughter's Actually, she's my first granddaughter. Got me for Christmas. It says Mountain Visions Barn Quilts. Isn't that cool? She knows I like coffee. So now it won't get cold on me down here in the basement. I'll see you in a little while. All right, here we are. We're ready to start painting. Here's our pattern. Now, a few folks had asked me to show them how I get my pattern on my board. And I usually skip that part, but today I'm gonna go ahead and draw it on the board, and then you'll actually see me drawing the pattern twice. So here's my board. It's one half inch MDO, medium density overlay. You know, it's made out of resin. So if you're allergic to resin, be very careful with it. I am, and I have to get that sealed up pretty quick when it comes in or when I, I actually keep mine in the potting shed <laughs> and I'll bring it down when I need it. And so I've got the kills on top of it and I really should have painted the back too because it's double-sided. So let me show you what I'm gonna do now. Now, I want one inch on each side, and my board is 18 inches. So I'm gonna mark, mark it at one, and then I'm gonna mark it at, um, okay. So I don't confuse you, let me do it this way. I'm gonna mark it at one all the way. And that way we'll go ahead and draw our border. If my pen's going right. border now. We're going to have a one inch border, remember. 
and I'm using my heat erasable pens. You can find them on Amazon. Just Google, uh, not Google, but do a search for heat erasable pens. And my favorite ones, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It starts with an I, but they're all, you know, basically the same. And I just got some refills. I didn't get the pens itself. I just got refills. And so I, you know, had, over time, I've gathered up a lot of these, the cartridges. I just needed the refills now. So, now we've got a one inch border all the way across. So now we're just going to measure our four inches. We need four blocks, four inches. So we're making a tick mark at four, eight, and twelve. All the way around. And I'm hoping you're in this. I tried to make sure this block was in the middle when I started. Making it four, eight, and twelve. That's where we're marking them at. So we're going to have four, four inch blocks. So basically, all you're doing is just drawing that same pattern on here. Same pattern that I drew on the paper. You see, I drew, I drew it on that paper because I don't know how good you guys can see this, these pin marks. But I know using that dry erase marker, it's bright enough and dark enough so you can see it. There's your four blocks over and four blocks up.
Okay, I've got the four points, the other four points taped up. I'll get rid of the lines and get those three coats put on the board and I'll be right back. But that is the cameo blue. This one that we're going to put on there. I'll see you in a minute. four petals painted. See if I can get it without it peeling the paint up. Let it dry good and then I, I let the, you know, because I use that heat tool, I let it cool down. I didn't let that get dry good enough. Can you see it? Just thought I did. Just that one little spot and I fix it. You know, we still have to figure out what color we're gonna put around here, don't we? All right, now what I'm gonna do We need to go ahead and figure this out. Let me think about it a little bit. I'm gonna fix that. Now, let me show you. If I just have a little tiny dab, I, I'll use this. It's a giant toothpick, like, um, hors d'oeuvre, you know, people sticking hors d'oeuvres or something, or sandwiches. But it, anyway, it's just got a real sharp point on the end of it. Can you see that? We pull it down this way so you can see it. All right. Or I use just a little tiny flat brush. And so that's what I'm going to use here. I may stick this right in the corner here but I'll be right back I'll fix that and then decide what color our embellishment blocks our dimension blocks is that what I'm calling it you know what I'm talking about these blocks I'll be back <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, I wanted to remind you before I painted that last color of gray on here. You see, let me get you way down here in this corner right here. <clears throat> when you're taping, make sure you get right into that corner so that all your angles come together, all your points meet without overlapping. Because that's how you get your design on your pattern and on your quilt. You want your uh, points to be very sharp. And that's how you get them sharp, is by making sure that tape is in there right. And you had not overlap the point of the previous spot or section. Okay, just wanted to show you that. Oh, look how that quite made the other colors just pop out. I'm glad I used that bright white. Supposed to be winter time, so. tape off of this and flip it around and use it for the border. I'll just pull it. And then I'll just move, I'll just, see that was on this side. I'm just going to move it up now and tape it down up there. But I'm going to take it all off first. Make sure it's good and dry before I start touching this other stuff up here. Does that make sense? I want to make sure there's no, no wet tape anywhere before I put it up there and get white all over that. It shouldn't be wet. I'm pretty. I know you can't hardly see it. I just put that tape up all around it. <laughs> kind of threw it off. Alright. Let me get that taped up. I'm going to use the Metropolis Gray for the border. And that's this dark gray here. And when I get that painted on, I'll show you my stencils. Okay, see her? She's looking good. I gotta put the snowflakes on. And let me grab the snowflakes and I'll be right back. Okay, you see my stencil? That's not a stencil. I did not stencil that that perfect. That is a decal because I tried, I made the stencil on my Cricut and then 
I tried to pull it off and this part's getting all messed up. See, See that's <laughs> the back part. Or, oh, here it is. It's the back part. It got all tore up. And I thought, I'm just gonna use that. And I'll put, I always put three coats of um, sealer on it. So I'll put the three coats of sealer and then I'll, I'll tell the lady that I'm giving it to what I did. So she can just kind of be watching that. I think they'll stay on there. I've, I saw people put cows and horses and everything else on their barn quilts with the with decals. I'd rather have stenciled it, but it's gonna be fine. That's what you have to do, right? Drop back and putt every once in a while. Let me get the other three on there. And we'll call her done. Okay, here she is. I got the decals on there. I think it looks wintry. I decided not to put the little snowflakes all in it the way that picture had. The one I showed you to start with. I just, you know, I thought it would be too distracting, but you could do that if you wanted to. You could just put snowflakes all over it. Anyway, I hope you had a good time painting with me today. And I hope you will subscribe and join my channel and help me grow it this year. And one of my goals, I have many, but one of them is to be more consistent and posting videos. I know I can't do one a week, but if I could do two a month, that would be great. So I'll try for that, and if I get more than that, then good. <laughs> Some months will be better than others. Talk to y'all later. Thanks for joining me. Here's another shot of that pattern if you want to take a screenshot so you'll have it. It's an easy pattern and you can design it any way you want to. See you in the next video.